And uh, I'll try to keep this real simple. But it's going to be hard for me. But anyhow. We have that written down. We talk so yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to forget the compass. And anyhow, uh, one time I was given a demonstration, and uh, uh, a young guy raised his hand, and, and after the demonstration, said, uh, "Hey," he said, uh, uh, "I was kind of following along, but he said a lot of this stuff went over the top of my head." So it just literally went right over the top of my head. And I apologized to him and I said, hey, I said, I'm really sorry about that. I said, uh, I know I'm a pretty tall fella, but uh, uh, trust me, next time I won't wear my high heels. <laughs> so, so anyway, what we're going to talk about is uh, direction finding. And uh, of course, everybody knows me. My name's Rick. Calls WBAZRQ. I can't see that. Can't see that? Let's get some lights on here. Does this light turn this light on? Ah! Does that help? Let there be light. Let there be light. Maybe if I put it in blue instead of black, it'd be better. But anyhow, um, we're talking about direction finding. Uh, I like to use aviation as, as um, a demonstration. Uh, basically because I'm familiar with it. And one of the things that, that uh, I like to do is show how, how they locate an airplane. Let's talk about one of the options that they do, and that's using radar. Well, to use radar, on every plane there's an encoder, and it's a transponder. The transponder sends out a digital code that says, your altitude's this high, and it also sends out a little beacon where they can identify by radar, it attaches a number to you, it shows up on a radar as your number. And they can tell you where you're at, what you're, what you're doing, how fast you're flying, and altitude. Well, before that, and they still do this occasionally, it's called a DF steer, direction finding steer. So I'm an airplane, and I'm out here flying along in my little airplane. How's that for an airplane? And I'm heading this way, and I think I'm going to an airport, but I got confused. And I thought, oh crap, I'm lost. Now what am I going to do? I don't see this airport I'm heading for. Maybe the wind shifted me. So what they do is you call in to a tower, and you say, I'd like to have a DF steer. Immediately what they do is they contact another control tower, say, over here. Well, they're, they're somewhere over here. The control tower you're talking to. And they said, uh, what we'd like for you to do is go to this frequency and give me a tone. Hold your microphone down for 10 seconds. And when you do that, he uses direction finding antenna and he shoots over this way, like this, and at the same time, this control tower shoots over this way. Boy, that's terrible. It goes over this way. Okay? And they'll tell you right away. They say, okay. Five minutes later, they call you back and say, we want you to do it again. So you're somewhere heading this way. You're in this airplane, and you're now in this direction now. Because they tell you, they say, hold your attitude, hold your direction, hold your airspeed. Five minutes later, they contact it, please do a signal again. So now they do another shoot this way. And they got you. They had you here, they got you here. Now they've got you. They know, number one, the time. Now they have distance. <laughs> How far you've traveled in that amount of time. They know what your airspeed is. Okay? They know what your altitude is because you just told them. I'm at 8,000 feet. And they said, you're heading at 26 degrees. 
That's your current heading right now. Your airport that you want to land at over here, you're going to have to turn your aircraft to 43 degrees and hold that heading, hold that altitude, and in 27 minutes you'll be over your airplane, aircraft, or uh, airport. That's how they get you to that airport. They know exactly where you're at. By doing this, then you thank them and say, oh, thank God. Oh, gee, thanks. You might even want them to t you know, tell you when they're right over the airport. So you turn there to that heading and you flew for 27 minutes or whatever, seen the airport and landed. Now you're safe. That's called a DF steer. What you do in direction finding is basically the same thing. Now, two different ways of doing direction finding. One, if you're just an individual and you want to chase a signal down. So you've got a guy out here transmitting on a set frequency. And you're over here somewhere. And you're going to use a direction finding antenna. And you're going to point in that direction, point in that direction, and point in that direction. And you're going to look for the maximum strength. This is one way of doing it. And you're going to say, okay, he's here. You're going to go to here. You're going to do it again. You might have drifted this way, and you're going to find it. And then finally, you're going to get there, and you're going to use some tricks. One of the little tricks is, is called uh, body shielding. So you've got a strong signal <coughs> with your antenna, your direction finding antenna, Either way, all different kinds, they got them, loops, whatever. And then you're going to say, I'm pretty darn close, but I'm not real sure where he's at. You're going to take your, take your antenna off. You're going to hold it to your body, and you're going to go like this. And you're going to look on the S meter, get the maximum strength, okay? And you're going to follow him in, maximum strength, follow him in. Now you know the direction. Because on these antennas, they're bi-directional. So if you're getting a signal, you don't know whether you're getting it back that way or that way. So you use a little trick like this. A lot of guys carry a piece of aluminum foil with them, you know, and then put the antenna on aluminum foil or a pie pan or <clears throat> all kinds of little gizmos to create a shield. That's one way of doing it. So then you can follow this guy in until you get him and you identify him. Now, here's another way, is you can pair up in teams, and you can do identically with this direction finding that we did with the airplane. You can even have a guy at his home base. He doesn't want to get out and get it, but he wants to participate in the fox hunt. So you throw a fox out here, and he'll transmit a tone or a voice, he may say, this is the Fox, WB8CRQ, I'm transmitting for a little while. Oh, sorry, got to go. And he shuts down, you know, signal. When he's talking, that's when you got a guy over here at the home base, got a direction or antenna, a big beam, and he cranks it around here until he gets, oh boy, I got an S meter reading, a 9.5 on him. So you got this point, he's shooting over here, you got another guy with a directional antenna, and he's doing the same thing, and he gets it, and he gets his compass out. Okay, he's 280 some degrees, I got him. So then he shoots, from here he shoots up, now you got an intersection point. Now comes in the math. I like to use an aviation map for the area that they're doing the fox hunt because it gives me latitudes and longitudes. I got a latitude and a longitude here. So I know where this is on the map. I know where this guy's at. He's got a latitude and longitude. Now, we can take this map, 
find these points and draw two intersects. Bingo! There's our fox. Now we can move in on him. He can move in, keep moving in, keep shooting. So you center in on the fox. That's one way of doing it. Now, let's talk about ELTs for a minute. Emergency location transmitters. All aircraft have them. All ski patrols have them. A lot of hikers carry them. All our military has them. It sets off on impact, sets off a tone on a set frequency. And it beep, 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 beep. That's the location transmitter for emergency purposes only. They used to be on two frequencies. They used to be on 121.5, 243 something. But now they've changed them. They've done away with the 121. Okay? So they're used for for helping people, for getting people out of trouble. Uh, I've helped the Civil Air Patrol many times locate an airplane that has an ELT that accidentally got set off. Now, luckily, when they called me, they said it's not a crash. If it would have been a crash, I would have been out looking for an airplane in a field to find him. Because what happens is, on impact, there's a... a a weighted switch in the back of the aircraft fuselage. And when the impact hits it, snaps that switch and turns it on. Now what happens is a lot of times when maintenance is being done to the aircraft, they, they do a test quarter after the hour. They'll flip them on, check them with their comm radio to see they're working, and shut them off. Sometimes putting the new batteries in, they set them off, they forget about them. Sometimes a student comes in, makes a heavy landing, Sets that switch off, parks it in the in the uh, airport, and goes home. Civil Air Patrol gets called. Hey, we got one active. We don't know if it's a crash. We don't know what. We start doing some shooting. Find out it's at the airport. Go in and deactivate it. Okay. Same principle is used. Same principle is used now with satellites. They got two satellites. They get a signal down, they can locate the guy that's buried in the snowdrift. They can locate the hiker that's up in the mountains and lost his direction. That's what they're a lot of direction finding used for. But with amateur radio, we've developed this hobby called fox hunting. And we use the same principles, the mathematical principles, of locating the transmitter. Every year at Dayton, they have a fox hunt. And it's really interesting. They use bugs, little transmitters this big, and they may place one on a moving target. They may come by and just drop one in one of the demonstration areas, and you'll see guys go around <laughs> trying to find the bug. Now, bugs can be in your motel room, and you can use a simple thing like an RF meter. And it's a very simple circuit. It's a little 1N34 uh, diode coil for the frequency. This will sense RF. It'll sense the RF leaks in your shaft. So basically this is used to find RF. So if we, we turned this thing up and walked around here, we might find a miniature camera or an audio sensing because it's putting off RF. It's on a frequency. We can find that. Also, if you're looking for bugs, <coughs> you can lose a frequency meter. So you found a signal source, you find out what frequency it's on. And looking up the band plan, you can pretty well tell what it is. If it's a closed circuit television, if it's an audio source for somebody's listening in on you, or whatever. So a lot of times I'll take this with us when we travel and look for bugs in my motel room. Listening devices, believe it or not, sometimes they're there. It's a violation of your rights. So anyway, that's basically what, what, uh, what this is used for. Um, also, direction finding is used for balloons, weather balloons. Uh, 
I track weather balloons once in a while just for the fun of it. Uh, 403 megahertz. They set them off on the hour every, or every 7 to 7 is when they, they set them off. 7 in the morning, 7 in the evening. <coughs> Those little units send down data. You can track that as a ham. You can get uh, a little uh, dongle, little RTL, put it to your computer, their software, to allow you to track that weather balloon altitude, and you can also download the data. Atmospheric pressure, temperature, and wind speed. It's going to give you all that. You can track it on the map and everything. So it's pretty, pretty neat what they do there. But um, fox hunting for ham radio is developed for emergency uses, for finding things in an emergency. And that's why, they, as a hobby, they do it. Um, there's um, several types of antennas. There's galores of antennas you can build. This is a little quad, a little two-meter quad. It's great for finding signals. Also works if you want to take a handheld hook onto it and get into a repeater. So, so it's a nice little little quad build out of welding, brazing rod, and you know whatever. And uh, I use that to play around with once in a while. But this circuit here that I put together is a little circuit I found on the internet years ago. And uh, this unit is called a, um, uh, a di differential of arrival time. What it has in it, has a little circuit that I put together. It uses a 555 timer chip. This timer chip is, is um, turns out like an oscillator, works like an oscillator for me in this circuit. This oscillates at a thousand times per second. On the end here are pin diodes, little high speed switching diodes. What this oscillator does is it receives the signal, but it switches from here to there, here to there, here to there, here to there, like that. Very fast, thousand times a second. So it looks at the differential between the signal reaching here and the signal reaching here. And when I reach, get that equal, that oscillation equal, it nulls. It goes to zero because they're equal. So it's the same principle here. Here's my, my fox. Here's my antenna. And I'm reading here and here. When I turn it, this goes longer. In other words, to this point or this point. That means it's out of phase. It goes out of phase. But when it goes equal, it's in phase. And therefore, my direction of that signal is right in front of me. <clears throat> so this circuit is pretty simple. There's, um, I'll put on the, on the board here. Or you can just look it up on the internet. Just look up um, uh, time differential uh, antenna. Or um, what do they call it? They call it DO. What is it they call it? DO uh, differential of, of, of position antenna. But if you go in there and go fox hunting, look for fox hunting, you'll find it. There's several. Yeah, Dave? Could it be right behind you with that? Yes, it can. And that's where you do that. So when I go out there, start off with this antenna, I find it, I say, okay, that's pretty pretty strong, I can hear it. Now I've got an S-meter on here too. So I clip this right on there. Like that, throw the switch on, and I can I can receive. I don't know whether you'll hear it or so. I get a signal of uh, somebody got a simplex frequency. They got one, 147.24. I'll turn it up, maybe here. 147.24. I got that one. Okay, give me a 5 2. Hear it? What I'm looking for is a null. 
further the way you get, the better the gnaw gets. See, now I'm reading right that side. That's how that works. Pretty simple circuit. So, uh, I tried to keep it as short as possible because I know, you know, we're running close on time. Is there any questions? I use a GPS a lot of times uh, for my latitude and longitude when I'm doing a two position. Uh, I'll use a compass to give me a little bit more better accuracy. I use a frequency counter sometimes. Uh, basically, that's about it. Is what I'll use for direction finding, and you can you can find the signal pretty pretty good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, Dave. I've seen a long time ago. I saw an antenna set up where they have a loop, and right behind it or right in front of it was a vertical. Yes. And they were coupled together. Right. And that would give you instead of bi-directional, it would be unidirectional. Yeah. Now there's a you lot ever of. Use one of those? Huh? You ever use one? Yeah. Of those? Yeah. There's a lot of equipment out there for direction finding. A lot of it's more sophisticated than this. Uh, a lot of it's full digital. It'll have a circle of light, rotate like this, and tell you exactly the direction, give you the field strength of it, the strength of the signal, and you can do a lot of things with those. But uh, uh, I've done real good with that. <laughs> tell you a little story about a guy. We had a fox hunt one time, and. Uh, um, it always turns out to be a lot of fun because guys are running all around in the back of pickup trucks holding up antennas. People are looking at them like, what are they doing? You know, they're looking for a bomb well, or something. It's the FBI or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this guy <laughs> took his handheld. Yeah. <laughs> he took his handheld out and uh, he had a real long antenna on it and, and uh, hooked it up. He went into it and had his wife drop him off at a cemetery out in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, it got hilarious because I'm out there looking, and, and I'm saying, where is he at? I can't see him. You know, he's got to be here somewhere. He got behind this big stone, and he was sitting back there drinking a Mountain Dew, and he'd look out the corner, and he had, he had binoculars and stuff, and he was watching the guys say, you're hot, you're hot, you're hot, you're cold, you're cold, you're cold. And he just played us for hours. And then what he did, is he made up a little directional antenna and he cheated. He put a signal <laughs> that way. All of a sudden, I'm getting strong signals this way. And I'm like, where is it coming from? So he's used, supposed to use just a little whip. And he took the took it off, put a snub nose on, played games with us, and dropped his power down. And uh, just he would say, "Well, I'm here." And then he quit. He was sneaky, Bob. So now, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, well, he was making the situation. Uh, because in a real situation, somebody was playing around with you and didn't want you to find them, they'd like, well, do something like that.